<laughs> if you guys look very closely out there, you might be able to see a couple ice shacks. That is Lake Winnipeg. We are in Gimli, the Lakeview Resort, and I'm on a balcony. This is bougie. Uh, we are fishing Lake Winnipeg today. As mentioned, it is right there. There's shacks out there. I think I'm gonna go a little further. I got my snowmobile along. Um, but yeah, we're in a pretty sweet location. Um, I love the late mornings, love the late sunrise, get to sleep in a little bit more. So sunrise is only like 8.30. Hopefully we can get, you know, to the lake before eight and uh, be set up before the sun rises. But I gotta stop talking to the camera. Anyways, I wanna give you a quick little look around. Sam, I, I wish Sam was along to give a tour of this uh, facility. We got one TV, we got two TVs. We got a big, beautiful bed. We've got a kitchenette, which is very key for fishermen. If you're spending multi days, this is like, yeah, it's important. Anyways, a lot of room to spread out my gear. Um, they've got a pool, they've got a restaurant. But yeah, it's a stunning location and I will link them below. But we gotta get fishing. It's supposed to be 65 kilometer gusts, which is probably one of the windiest days I've ever fished in. So I'm very thankful we got the flip over. But anyways, enough talk. We gotta pick up some minnows, we gotta pick up some breakfast and we gotta go catch some big greenback walleyes. Well guys, welcome to the surface of Mars, AKA Lake Winnipeg. Uh, not too many boats out right now. Uh, it's, it's really windy. Really, really windy. I'm not sure my audio is going to be, but we're going to try to set up and uh, catch some big trophy uh, sized greenback walleyes. Welcome to Lake Winnipeg. Probably the most popular fishery in Manitoba. For good reason, it is home of the greenback walleye. What's a greenback, you might ask? It is a walleye with a greenback, I know. Something to do with the limestone and the sediment in the water gives these walleyes a, a greenish emerald hue, which is unique to walleyes anywhere else in the world. Um, and, and the tributaries, like if you go to Pine Falls, Red River, obviously Lake Winnipeg here, they have that green color. There's been some economic studies done on Lake Winnipeg and the amount of tourism dollars this lake generates is just absolutely silly. It's definitely a big, uh, a big destination for a lot of our American friends for the fact that it's super accessible. You're so close to the big city. You know, you can day trip from the city. You can stay in Selkirk, you can stay in Gimli. I'm staying at the Lakeview, which is amazing. You can, there's an ice road there later in the year that they plow and rental shacks. So, I mean, depending on where you wanna stay on the lake, there's so many options. It's kind of a different type of fishing. You're not fishing specific pieces of structure. You're, you're fishing this giant mud bowl. Yes, there are some contour lines and stuff that can you know, concentrate fish, but it's kind of anyone's game. Obviously, the more time you spend out here, you find patterns and stuff, but you can come out for the first time ever, drill two holes in 10 feet of water and catch a 30 inch walleye. So that's what I'm hoping for. We were fishing out from the mouth of the Red River. I don't know how much we're gonna move around today. Um, because the hurricane winds and it's just supposed to get windier. So we're probably gonna hunker down. We, we kind of dropped the ball on the morning bite. I'm gonna be honest. We met up with our buddy, Matt Hobson from Icebound Excursions. I've seen him in a bunch of videos. Met up with him this morning. We're gonna just share intel, text back and forth, see what's going on with the bite. And uh, hopefully we can corner some fish. Ooh, fish slithering on the right. Maybe two or one big one. Oh, guys. Guys, let's go, let's go. First like, oh my, God, oh no! Oh! oh, that was a good fish. You're freaking kidding me. That fish just pile-drived it. That was, that was bad. That fish just drilled it. All right guys, so a very typical one-two punch on Lake Winnipeg. We got the activate, we got the dead stick. So here we got a jig and a minnow, and on the other side, we got the rattle bait, the tantrum. I'm hooked in the ceiling. Oh no. Whenever you're tangled, the key is just to shake until it comes out. We're using the pink and gold. This is the medium size. Oh, there's a big mark on the bottom. Oh, another mark on the right. Small one on the right. Oh, I missed that one. Come on. I just want to see if I still got, oh, oh. Oh, I got him. I got him. <laughs> he ate the dead stick rattle bait. Right there, you have a sauger, which is the little cousin to the walleye. You can tell by the black dots, and they're a little more tubular shape. There is a cross 
called a saw guy, which is a little tougher to differentiate. Um, I've heard kind of got to have a scientist to, uh, to actually look at the DNA to tell if it's a saw guy. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that was a sauger. I'm working on my fish identification. Let's see how much ice we're dealing with for the Lake Winnipeg ice report. We have 15.5 inches of Lake Winnipeg ice. Oh, ooh, that's a little better. Just texting with Matt from Icebound. He's closer to me. And there we have, oh, he got away so close. That was my first green of the day. I was, I was pretty slow there, I'll admit. I'll admit that was pretty pretty sloppy. I'm not on my game today. That fish would not have turned around in an eight inch hole. I, I brought the 10 inch auger because I was like, you know what? We're gonna get a 33 inch Lake Winnipeg giant. Look at that fish slithering on the bottom. It doesn't look big right now, but it could also be, no, it's, it's not big. Look at that. Ooh, he's aggressive. Another sauger, another sauger. All right. I know I talk lots about the micro tungsten, but with how these fish are acting, I'm using something a little bigger. This is actually a jig I made myself by Do It Molds. This is a bullet nose head, and it's got a nice owner 5313 hook on it. Uh, it's just good, yeah. Like I, I like to have beefed up gear when I'm fishing for these big greenies in shallow water. It can get pretty violent. When I'm checking the drag, I'm checking it on the loaded rod so I can really feel what that's gonna be like when I Set the hook, but yeah, those fish are coming in and killing. Ooh, fish coming in on the other side. Come on, baby. They're gonna be slithering on the left. Ooh, okay, that is not small. That is not small. It looked small, and then it didn't look small. No! Oh, oh, oh. everything's good. If this fish bites again, there's just no way. He, I, I think that's him. I honestly think that's him sinking down. Look at this. He's gonna bite again. He's gonna bite again. Come on. Got him. Unreal. Unreal. Oh, guys, that was the same fish. Oh, there's a fish coming up to the other one. We got another one. Double greens, double greens. All right. <laughs> a little bit of a rodeo, but the greenbacks are on. Unbelievable. Wow. That was the fish I lost. I am, I am very confident. I gotta get back down there. That was madness. Rattle bait on the 38 medium. This is the true grit. This is my go-to greenback rod when I'm fishing in a shack for active baits. And then number two is the drench. I, I talk about this rod all the time. It's a 39 medium. It's a noodle tip and it is just, yeah, my, my favorite dead stick rod. So that, those two are kind of the, the great one-two punch. If I was fishing outside or in a little bit of a bigger shack maybe, or if I didn't have all this filming gear, I'd be using the, uh, the run and gun, the 50 inch, which is like such, such a sweet rod. Just sometimes with filming and in a smaller shack, it can get a little bit tight. I say this all the time, but that's the cool thing about live scope is it's just, you'll learn about how fish move in and you know what they're moving in pods. I've seen a lot of these fish coming in in pods of two to three, same thing talking about Hobson. He, uh, he's got the 360 going and he, he'll see, yeah, multiple fish at once. Today we are fishing in the Escape 2800. Um, I didn't bring any of my pegs to peg it down. There are like holes to peg it down, just like you'd peg out your pop-up. I forgot those. I wasn't thinking, I knew how windy it was gonna be. I mean, the biggest thing when you're setting up like this is back into the wind. That's where you have this support bar and it kind of just works the best. Um, I added another support bar here. I don't think it's actually made to be locked in on that spot, but just to keep the back a little more rigid. And then I also uh, just parked behind my, my snow machine, behind my sled, just to, you know, block the wind a little bit. It is just screaming. Like I said, I think it's supposed to gust up to 65. So just want to be careful. I also tied it to my snow machine just because I didn't have any pegs, but. How's it going? Good, how are you? It's starting to snow. It's beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Hobson from Howdy. Icebound Snowbear Adventures. 
He's not mic'd up, so he's gonna have to yell really loud. Well, Matt, how's the fishing been this winter? Well, this is the second time out, and it's been all right. No, nothing big today yet, though. So we gotta do better. I always can do better. Where are oh, you? oh, oh, oh! Yeah, there's something there. Is he gonna come back and eat the middle? This is your rod. This is your rod. Oh. I don't know. Oh, now he's coming for you. Oh no, wait. There's two fish there. Oh, there's a spot up top too. Yeah. Oh man. You're you're just between the fish and me. You're just barely. He's yeah. He's on you. Oh. <laughs> Matt's kids are gonna be watching this video and they're gonna be very disappointed in him. In this area. Oh, there's one. Oh wow. That's a nice fish. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh. Oh, you got him. Matt's on. Giant. Well, he can catch fish outside of his snow bear. I can. Proved it right there. It's a lot nicer inside. <laughs> it is nicer in the snow bear. Interesting minnow for me. Pull, pull that up. Look how this guy hooks his minnow on. I've actually never seen that before. Is this a thing? Is this a Hobson secret? It's It works. Look at that. That's a lot of exposed hook. I, I was lazy one day and uh, I tried it and it worked. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> doing it. Sorry, now we just uh, told the world your secret. Ooh, is there fish on the left? See how the bottom's just flickering a little bit? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. It is small. Thank you, sir. Old angry saugers. Oh, there's fish under you coming up. Ooh. Oh, nice. That was amazing footage. <laughs> I, that was my first green back of the day. You know what? That doesn't happen in an eight inch hole, but it definitely happens in a 10 inch hole. I want to see the three oh, the fish is under you. Oh, maybe he's coming to me. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, he's right up. Well, he's okay. It is a burbot. There you go. I don't think I've ever caught a burbot. Oh. I don't think I've ever caught a burbot on this lake. Yep. Once again, 10 inch hole foils me. Yeah, I'm gonna stay here. If all of a sudden you find something like, yeah, that you're like, Jay, get over here, then, uh, then I will, but I'll probably just stay here for the day. All right, I'll send you off. Good luck. Well guys, that was Mr. Matt Hobson from Icebound Excursions. You've seen me do a couple of videos with him before. Yeah, he's got multiple snow bears now. So if you're looking to book one, I'll link them below. It's such a great way to get out on Lake Winnipeg in comfort, no matter what the conditions are, those things can make it out and you can fish with the whole family in comfort. So Icebound Excursions, check them out. That was fun, it was nice. It's nice to fish with someone. Oh, there's a big fish on my bite. Got it, got it. Okay, I thought it was way bigger. Woo. Wow, did you see how huge that mark showed up? That fish was right under the ice. I would not have caught that fish without live scope because it just showed up and was there so quickly on the purple and pink tantrum. Sweet. First time using this color. I don't know the official name, but it looks pretty good. Guys, I'm gonna take a break in the action to show you my live scope settings. This is a question I've actually gotten asked a bunch. I am definitely not an expert. I know certain settings I can play with to clean up the image. So we'll show you right now. All right guys, so first thing you might notice about my live scope setup is the color palette. A lot of people think that I'm actually using first generation panoptics, not live scope, which is the second generation. The reason being the color palette matches and this is what my friend Jason at LiveScope Addicts recommended. And since using the other color palettes, this is definitely my favorite. So you go sonar setup, appearance, color scheme, and then you've got all the different options. So here's amber. That color palette, the amber, is probably the one that you would see the most on uh, you know, marketing material for LiveScope. It's what Aaron Weeb uses a lot of the time. I really like using the blue color scheme. Sonar setup, appearance, color scheme, blue because it gives you the different colors depending on you know, how hard of a return it is. Um, so that's what I like using, but as you can see, you know, there's a lot of different options. I'm using forward view 
when I'm scanning for fish, when I'm looking for crappies, something like that, I'll use forward mode so I can see, you know, where that pot of fish is, where I'm gonna drill. Right now, I'm kind of just hunkered down and waiting for the fish to cruise through towards me. So I'm using the down view, which is great for fishing with multiple people, um, showing, you know, lures on either side of the transducer. So sonar setup, installation, orientation is down. So gain, my gain is often around 60%. You know, it could be 50, it could be all the way up to like 70 or 75 in deeper water. And then the bottom here, you have, you know, your different range rings for depth. So there's some positives and negatives to on how you have this setup. If I zoom it in, I can see the bottom or let's say 15, I can see the bottom nicely, but I'm not seeing what's off to the edge. So that's a reasoning to just bump out a little bit further, maybe bump out to 25. I'm not gonna get that same close-up zoomed in shot when the fish rolls in, but then I can see that much further. I can see 12 feet out to the edges when that fish does roll in. So so yeah, what you can do is you can keep it zoomed out and then just you know zoom in when things happen. TVG, so that's time varied gain. What the TVG does is it essentially um, will lessen the gain right below your transducer. So sometimes you'll get that strongest return right under. Um, if you wanna just kind of tone down the, the return right under your transducer, so it's a little more of an even gain across the, across the board, then you can play with TVG. So you can go TVG, low, medium, high, and as you can see, it kind of just knocks out that, that power. So I'm keeping TVG off. I'm keeping noise reject on high. I can clean up the image even more. If I want, I can drop that gain down and it cleans up the image. You can still see the lures and everything. I'd rather sacrifice a little cleanliness of an image to see that fish a split second sooner. So I'm okay dealing with a little more mess, a little more clutter on the screen to make sure that it's marking my jig better, it's marking the fish better. So a lot of the time I have my TVG off, noise is on high or medium, and then I'm just playing with the gain, but it's all based on the situation, you know, based on the type of bottom and, and how deep you're fishing, all those things. Hopefully that helps answer some of your questions. Well, just got a report that Matt, Mr. Matt Hobson, Mr. Icebound just lost a big, a big one. So we'll see, I wasn't planning on moving today, but if we're gonna move, we should probably move right now as it's three o'clock and uh, sunset is 4.30. So we've had good action here and that's one of the reasons I'm kind of reluctant to move and because of the hurricane winds, but we'll see. We'll see what Matt has to say. All right, we're making the move. It's been decided. Gotta go quick though, gotta go quick. One of them to cooperate today. Yeah. Like that one. That one that's right there. The one that's gonna eat the dead stick. Hit him! Hit him! Oh, I thought you were grabbing it. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to watch you struggle that with the wrong not, hand. That is not the technique uh, to use. Are you keeping any more? No, I'm good. You're good? Well, we moved. Matt found some fish for me with the 360 and uh, yeah. He's gonna fish with us for a little bit more and then he's gotta go home for dinner. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. That's a good one. Yes. Am I in it? Nope. nope. Turn it on. Yeah, this is, uh, this is on. I am never too proud to take a hot tip from a friend. I learned that guiding. When the senior guide tells you to get in the bay, you get in the bay. Get your pride out of the way. They're calling over. They're calling you over because they want you to catch fish. And Matt wanted me to catch fish. He felt sorry for me. I want everyone to catch fish. Well guys, we are at four o'clock now. It is about half an hour till sunset. If you haven't heard it before, it's a little thing called prime time. It's when the magic happens. It happens in hunting, it happens in fishing. Sounds good. Thanks man. You're the man. And the next big fish I catch is for you. Mark. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a big one. Yes. Yes. Please stay pinned. Oh, this is what we've been waiting for all day, guys. Oh, that's got some weight. Oh. Oh.
Yes, that's a hog. That is a hog. Oh, yes. Look at that walleye. Look at that walleye. This is a flashback to with Josh on the Red River. Man, he gobbled the tantrum. That is a Lake Winnipeg piggy right there. Oh, okay, I'm gonna hold this fish in the water. All right, guys, one more look. This fish I dedicate to Matt Hobson, Icebound Excursions. That is a big green piggy right there. Oh, man. Lake Winnipeg, baby. When their body turns upright like that, that's when they're ready to kill. I'm a happy man. Prime time comes through once again. Thank you, Matt. Well, guys, how about this epic lighting right now? This is like cinematic. We got the heater, we got the live scope. Yeah, if, if you're into like cinema, the blue orange color palette is, it's, it's good. Um, amazing day on Lake Winnipeg. Thank you for Mr. Hobson fishing with me, searching, hunting. I got another project going on with the snow bears the next couple days, so uh, stay tuned for that. Once again, a testament to staying out into the dark because one bite can make your day. Um, huge shout out to Lakeview Gimli for the hospitality. Thank you guys for watching, please stay safe. I think we'll probably go ice fishing again pretty soon. See you guys. <laughs>